During World War II, as well as using a long list of British designed and built aeroplanes, from the Spitfire to the Lancaster to the Meteor, Britain used a lot of American types, such as the Brewster Buffalo in the early war in the Far East, the North American P-51 Mustangs in Europe, and carrier aviation such as the Grumman Avenger. Britain was often short of aircraft or needed certain types to meet a specific requirement, and America was happy to supply them. It is a trend that has only accelerated in the post-war era, and today a large proportion of RAF aircraft are US designs. However, this was not an entirely one-way street, for you may be surprised to learn that during World War II, the Americans made use of several British designed and built aircraft for a variety of reasons. To filling gaps in their own capability in specific campaigns to utilizing British aircraft because specific designs were the best then available. Perhaps the most famous British World War II aircraft is the Supermarine Spitfire, a graceful monoplane fighter that first entered RAF service in 1938. It served in all theatres of the war, in many different marks, and would remain in British service well into the jet age. Before the arrival of the P-51 Mustang, the Spitfire was used by the US AAF as a frontline fighter in both England and North Africa. The fourth fighter group had been created by American volunteer pilots of the RAF's Eagle Squadrons, US squadrons that had fought in the defense of Britain before the US entered the war. In September 1942, the Eagle Squadrons transferred to the US AAF and continued to fly the Spitfire on bomber escort missions and in dogfights with German fighters over the English Channel and northern France. In early 1943, the 4th Fighter Group gave up its Spitz for the P-47 Thunderbolt. However, another UK-based Spitfire unit, the 31st Fighter Group, flew the Spitfire on operations in northern France and later in North Africa and Italy, before trading the Spitfire Mark IX for the P-51 Mustang. A second Spitfire-equipped US fighter group, the 52nd, fought in North Africa and Italy, in the latter campaign seeing service over the beaches of Anzio, following the Allied landings there. They too eventually traded their Spits for Mustangs. During World War II, US-flown Spitfires accounted for nearly 350 aerial victories against German and Italian planes. The multi-role strike aircraft, the Bristol Bowfighter, was another successful British design that the Americans used. Introduced into RAF service in 1940, it was a particularly effective night fighter, and it was in this configuration that it served with the US AAF. Several night fighter squadrons deployed to North Africa in 1943, where they were equipped with the Bowfighter, conducting night patrols over Axis-occupied territory and raids against German positions in Algeria and Tunisia. With the defeat of the Axis in North Africa in May 1943, four Bowfighter-equipped U.S. squadrons undertook night operations against Axis positions on the islands of Sardinia and Corsica and mainland Italy, until re-equipped with the P-38 Lightning fitted with radar. Some U.S. Bowfighters took part in the invasion of Germany, until being re-equipped with the Northrop P-61 Black Widow. The reason the Americans were given Bowfighters was because they were surplus to British requirements, as squadrons had re-equipped with the de Havilland Mosquito, leading to a reverse lend-lease situation. But the Americans soon began to use the Mosquito as well. This fantastic aircraft, nicknamed the Wooden Wonder due to its limited use of metal in its fuselage and wings, was a fast multi-role combat aircraft and one of the best of World War II. It was an effective bomber, reconnaissance platform, day or night fighter, maritime strike aircraft or intruder, and was particularly famous for low-level precision raids made by RAF squadrons against prisons, Gestapo headquarters and factories in occupied Europe. 
Slicing vapor trails with its wooden wingtip, the bomber does a slow loop. To a Luftwaffe rear gunner, its striking power is more like a timber wolf than a mosquito. With one motor cut, it can stunt like a fighter, maintaining perfect balance and efficiency of speed. In actual combat and attack, the mosquito has upheld the excellence of its trial run. A bomber made of wood has proved its metal. First introduced in 1941, it entered U.S. service as a night fighter as a scouting aircraft over Europe to check weather over targets for long-range bomber attacks and also long-range aerial reconnaissance. The type superior to the Lockheed F-5 Lightning and Spitfires used by the U.S. AAF in England. The Mozzie in U.S. service also flew red stocking missions, dropping propaganda leaflets over Germany and dropping demolition equipment to resistance groups in Europe, alongside U.S. B-24 and A-26 aircraft. The Mosquito was mostly replaced by the B-29 Superfortress in U.S. AAF service near the end of the war, with the squadrons now in the Pacific theatre. And today the Americans still operate some British designs, including the famous Harrier jump jet, a variation of the British aerospace Harrier II that equips some United States Marine Corps squadrons. And one final example, the English Electric Canberra, licensed built in the US as the Martin B-57 Canberra, a twin-jet tactical bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. The English Electric version entered service in 1951 and was retired from the RAF in 2006. But three Martin B-57s still soldier on in US service, officially belonging to NASA. They have been used for electronic warfare over Afghanistan. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.